So I'm just hunkered down in this salmon bear here, checking out these sockeye salmon we've got spawning here in the creek. And if we have a walk just back in the forest here, not very far, right over here, we've got this big western red cedar. And at the base of it, we've got a couple salmon carcasses. This one here loaded with eggs, carried here by a bear. This one looking real ripe. Whoo! Oh, smells really great. Um, you'll notice <clears throat> that all three of these carcasses are right at the base of this massive western red cedar tree. Now this denotes a really important connection because with cedars and all conifers, really the main limiting growth factor is a lack of nitrogen, which is used to create chlorophyll, which they then use to photosynthesize to generate sugars and grow into these beautiful, massive trees. But nitrogen is pretty tough to come by in a usable form in terrestrial environments like this, especially in wet, rainy ones that tend to sweep usable nutrients away from soils very quickly. And it's often sourced from decomposing leaf litter, like all these big leaf maple trees you see around me here, um, with the help of various insects and mycorrhizal fungi who break it down and redistribute it through the forest. But here in riparian areas of streams that support salmon, there are unusually high levels of nitrogen 15 and carbon 13, which are rare heavy isotopes of these elements that are primarily found in the oceans. Turns out that these salmon, after spending their adult lives feeding and living in the oceans, are loaded with these heavier isotopes. And when they return up these rivers to spawn and die, their carcasses are carried off into the woods by bears and, you know, like these carcasses here, and then big chunks of them being carried off further into the forest by birds and other scavengers where they break down and decompose or find their way back to the forest floor as scat from whatever ate it. And they leave those rare heavy isotopes of nitrogen and carbon in the soil, redistributing all those precious nutrients throughout the forest so that trees like this cedar here can grow big, strong, and healthy. So without these salmon, these iconic forests of Cascadia wouldn't exist as they do today. Pretty dang neat.